Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at Part P. Now, this applies to England and Wales only. It does not apply to Scotland or Northern Ireland, and certainly it doesn't apply, of course, in other countries. So, uh, if you're watching from those countries, well, uh, this isn't applicable to you, but by all means, uh, carry on watching anyhow. So, uh, let's have a look at what Part P is, and of course what it's not, and how you can comply with it. Now, Part P is the uh, section of the building regulations which applies to electrical installations. And it happens to be part P because uh, when it was introduced, that was the next letter in the alphabet that was available. And there's many other parts, uh, starting with part A, which is for structure, and then there's part B for fire safety, and a whole load of other ones all the way through to P. And of course, uh, there's now some other ones beyond that. There's actually now a part Q for security, and there's various other documents, things as well, which go with that. But uh, essentially, part P is just the one that covers electrical installations, and it covers electrical installations in dwellings as in uh, homes and other associated buildings, does not apply to uh, commercial premises or factories and that type of thing. Now Part P is actually incredibly simple, and uh, this is what it says here, and uh, this is all that it actually says, and it just says that uh, Part P1, reasonable provision shall be made in the design and installation of electrical installations in order to protect persons operating, maintaining and or altering the installations from fire or injury. And that's actually the whole extent of part P, so as you can see, it's pretty simple. Essentially, you're just making sure that it's actually safe and not going to set on fire, cause injury and damage. And as it says there on the side of that document, there it just obviously it applies to uh, dwellings or uh, parts that are attached to it, so sort of common areas of flats and things, and uh, any buildings that receive power from a dwelling or a house or whatever. So, of course, things like uh, garden sheds and uh, greenhouses and so on. Now there are a number of uh, what's called approved documents, and this is the uh, approved document P, which of course relates to uh, part P of the building regulations. Now 99% of what's in this document is not the actual building regulations themselves, that is simply that short paragraph that I uh, looked at uh, just a moment ago. But uh, these particular documents have been made and uh, generally contain a whole load of guidance about how to comply with part P, and there's also of course uh, corresponding ones for part A, B, C and so on. And as it says on this uh, page here, that uh, it gives practical guidance about how to meet the requirements of the building regulations. And uh, of course, uh, if you comply with what's in this document, then uh, it's fairly likely that you'll be complying with the building regulations. However, as it also says here, there's no obligation to actually use anything that's in this document. And of course, you can uh, comply with the standard in other ways. Of course, making sure it's safe uh, can of course be achieved in uh, many different ways. And of course, this doesn't always well refer to the wiring regulations or BS 7671. Although, of course, uh, complying with that uh, is also a way of ensuring that the installation is safe and uh, suitable to use. Now, on the first page here, there's also another important part that, uh, although, of course, this document is regarding electrical installations, it's fairly likely, in fact, almost inevitable, that other parts of the building regulations will also have to be taken into account. So, we've got some examples here. Uh, part A, the structure of the building. Of course, we're going to be making uh, channels in walls and cutting holes in joists and things. Well, again, they've got to be in the correct places and obviously of a certain size to avoid damaging the structure. And again, things like fire safety will also occur where you're sort of uh, drilling holes through uh, walls and ceilings, and obviously making holes where fire and smoke things could pass through there. And again, all the other parts uh, will likely to apply, so sort of energy efficient lighting there, for example, and the height of uh, socket outlets and switches. So. Although the Part P only covers itself with electrical safety, essentially, when you're installing electrical systems, it's pretty likely that you're going to come across many of the other parts as well. And of course, you need to make sure you're complying with those as well. Now, Part P actually applies to all electrical work in dwellings. So that means houses, bungalows, flats and the like. And I've got this diagram here, which is in the approved document. And it gives some examples of where Part P would apply. So as you can see, pretty much all parts of a house or a bungalow or any other kind of living area and it also covers kind of common parts and shared uh, staircases and that type of thing. And the only things it doesn't apply to are, let's say, for example, here, the business unit in the two there, and it would not also apply to things like offices and factories and that type of thing. So it's purely associated with dwellings or places where people live. And so it covers all electrical items within the building, including, uh, say, just placing a light switch or fully rewiring the entire building. And of course that's sensible because of course you would want everything in the building to be safe and obviously not to uh, set on fire and cause the place to be destroyed and people to be injured. Now in the box here we've got what's listed as notifiable work. Now although Part P applies to all of the electrical installation, there are a small number of items which need to be notified 
and these have to be notified to the Building Control Authority. And this is the list of those things which need to be notified, and there's various ways of doing this, which we'll look at in a moment. And uh, this is the list of things here. We've got uh, A, which is the installation of a new circuit, uh, the replacement of a consumer unit, and any additional alteration to existing circuits in a special location. And then it goes on to define what that is. So essentially it's a room containing a bath or shower, and the area surrounding the uh, bath, shower, and obviously there's the various distances there. So essentially it's within these zones inside a bathroom, and also covers if there's a swimming pool or sauna heater. So in your average house it's essentially going to be the bathroom, but not the entire bathroom in some cases, just the uh, parts uh, within a certain proximity to the bath or shower. And there's actually a diagram here which uh, essentially shows you the area covered, so it's the uh, bathtub or the shower tray, uh, 600 millimetres from that in all directions, and height of 2.25 uh, metres from the floor level. So anything in that area is considered notifiable work, and uh, also there's a note there about socket outlets should not be located within 3 metres of it. That's actually from the wiring regulations BS7671. And in terms of the bathroom, there's only a few things that are going to be within that zone. Electric showers would be a prime example possibly the uh, occasional extractor fan, but uh, really that's probably about it, as uh, pretty much everything else in the bathroom will be outside of the zones. Lighting, for example, is going to be in the ceiling, extractor fans quite commonly in the ceiling as well, and also things like towel rails or whatever, fairly likely to be more than 600 millimetres away from the bath. And as is here in 2.7, everything else is not notifiable, so that includes additions and alterations to anything else, and replacements, repairs and maintenance anywhere. Now those three things are the only items which are notifiable at the moment. Uh, in the past there were other things which were also notifiable, uh, specifically things in the kitchen and various things outside, but uh, at the moment those are the only three items which are notifiable if you live in England. If you live in Wales then the previous set of things still applies, so if you're putting some things in a kitchen in Wales then uh, that is notifiable, but the uh, same kitchen in England uh, would not be. So. Uh, there you go, and the same would apply for the stuff outside as well, but certainly for England it's uh, just those three new circuits, uh, replacement of a consumer unit, and the additional alteration to existing circuits in the special location, or in other words the bath or shower room. So the point of this is that uh, the vast majority of electrical work in dwellings is not notifiable, and can in fact be completed by anyone. You don't have to tell anybody, or have any particular qualifications, or in fact uh, really do anything at all other than to make sure, of course, that it is safe, and that's obviously a fairly straightforward and easy to understand concept. Generally, of course, uh, you'll be complying with BS7671, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way to do it, although in reality it's the most likely and straightforward way of doing so. Now, for the three things which are notifiable, there are actually three different ways in which you can do this. And we've got the three items listed here, A, B and C. Now, C is certification by a building control body, and generally this would involve sending a building notice or full plan submission to your local building control, and that also involves paying a fee, generally in the sort of uh, few hundred pounds to uh, anything above that, and they will then uh, presumably come out and inspect the work as they see fit. And again, this is exactly the same procedure as if we were going to be doing other notifiable work, such as replacing windows or installing heating equipment or even building an entire house. And uh, say it's simply a matter of filling in the relevant documents, sending with a fee, and of course sending that to your local building control office. So that procedure can be used by anybody, and of course that's what most people would use if they were doing the work themselves. Now the second method here, which is actually A in this list, is uh, self-certification by a registered competent person. Now for people like electricians, and of course also people that say install windows and do other things, it's rather tedious for them to send in a uh, load of documents to building control every single time they install a consumer unit, for example, and it would also get very expensive because, say, the minimum fee is typically a couple of hundred pounds. So there are various uh, schemes that have been set up, and uh, various people can belong to these, and in these circumstances uh, they can pay an annual fee, and then each time you wish to notify or notifiable work, it's just a matter of uh, sending the relevant documents to the organisation you belong to. Typically only costs, uh, say, £5 or so per notification. And of course that's only really applicable if you're going to be doing a lot of installation work, such as consumer units or whatever. It's certainly not appropriate for just the odd one-off job that someone's doing in their own house. And if you go down that route, then the person installing the work, as it says there, they will self-certify the work. 
And it's important to note they can only actually certify the work they've done themselves. You can't have that kind of system going on where someone else has installed it and then you get someone in to sign it off, as it were, later on. Because by then it's too late, you should have notified the Building Control Office before starting the work. Unless, of course, you are one of these registered competent persons. Now, for electrical work, there's various schemes which have been set up. Uh, Alexa is one of them. Uh, the NIC, EIC is another. And NAPIT or NAPIT is another one. And there are also a number of other schemes as well. So a bit confusing there, but essentially they all do the same job. It just allows the members of those to notify larger amounts of work at a reduced rate. And the third option here, which is B, which is something which hasn't really uh, come into operation in any large scheme, is third-party certification by a registered third-party certifier. And look at this section here, it just sort of describes the situation. And uh, it says, before work begins, an installer who is not a registered competent person may appoint a registered third-party certifier to inspect and test the work as necessary. And as we're notifying the building control office, you will have to pay these people a fee. And of course, they will visit and inspect and test the work and issue a report as appropriate. Now, there aren't actually many of these uh, third-party certifiers out there. It was supposed to be arranged that the uh, major schemes which operate the competent person schemes would actually operate these, but at least two of those have stated they won't be doing that, so uh, unfortunately there's very limited scope for these. And in reality, it's not likely to be something most people are going to use because, first of all, the amount of work that's notifiable is, of course, very small. It's only those three items. And secondarily, it's either just pay building control or pay a third-party certifier, so there's not really a huge benefit of going down that third-party certifier route. Nevertheless, it's an option that's uh, been put in there, so you could use that if you wanted to. So that's part P, simply a short paragraph in the building regulations that requires that electrical installations in dwellings are safe, not going to set on fire and not going to injure people. That's pretty straightforward and common sense stuff. And for the vast majority of electrical work in dwellings, you don't have to notify anybody or do anything beforehand, simply carry on as long as it's done safely and properly, not a problem. And for the three things which are notifiable, so namely new circuits, uh, replacement consumer unit, and work in a bathroom, then you either need to notify building control beforehand, use a third party certifier to do the notification, or the other option is to employ someone to do the work for you. And if they're a member of a competent person's scheme, then of course they can take care of the notification as well. Those are the only three options. Uh, the other option is to do nothing, which of course is breaking the law. And the only difference there, of course, in Wales, there are some other things which are notifiable, such as kitchens and outside, but uh, the principles, of course, are exactly the same. Now, there's a load of other stuff about Part P out there, and a fair amount of it is a complete load of old rubbish. And you may see things referred to as Part P courses you can go on. Well, really, there's no such thing, because uh, you've seen what Part P is. It's that single paragraph. Quite why anybody wants to set up a whole training course for that is a bit of a mystery. But, uh, of course, there are a number of courses called these Part P courses, Really, of course, what they are are just uh, training courses for various other types of electrical work. Nothing to do with Part P specifically at all. And you also may see things like Part P qualified. Well, again, there's no Part P qualification because it's just that paragraph in the building regulation. So there's no Part P exam you can take. There's no Part P qualification you can obtain. These things simply do not exist. Now, of course, there are lots of electrical qualifications and courses you can go on and lots of bits of paper you can collect with various things on them, but uh, none of them particularly relate to Part P in any way. But, of course, they may be useful if you were going to, say, apply to be a member of a competent person's scheme. But, uh, again, that's uh, not specifically related to Part P. And the most common misconception is that you can somehow do a load of work in your home and then just call in some electrician or whatever to come in and sign it off. Well, that's a load of old rubbish because uh, if you're going to be doing the work yourself, you need to notify before you've done the work. So doing the work and then calling someone afterwards, not going to work because it's too late then. You should have notified it before you started, either by directly going to border control or using the third party certifier route. So uh, unfortunately, if you've done a load of work and didn't tell anybody, well, it's already too late. The only real option you've then got is to go to border control and uh, explain the situation. They may well uh, come and inspect it or uh, do something with it. And uh, there is a procedure there to cover that, which is called regularisation. And that costs substantially more than notifying it in the first place, typically double. And of course, if you concealed a load of cabling and things in your house and plastered over them and who knows what, they may, of course, require that you remove the plaster so they can see where the cables go and uh, all kinds of other bother. So uh, generally not something that's recommended. So until next time, thanks for watching.